It's time for another project with the 555 timer chip. Welcome to Hacker Week. Yep, we're gonna do another 555 timer project. Haven't done one for a while, and the reason for it is a letter from a viewer with a really cool suggestion for a project. So let me read you this uh, email that I got from CJ. Hey Dino, I love your site and have a request if you are taking them. I'm a member of a small volunteer fire department. I've talked to many members of many fire departments over the years, and they are always talking about where to get reasonably priced emergency response lights like Wallen or Code 3 makes. They run in the hundreds of dollars from these companies. In our state, the lights would be flashing red LEDs. What he's talking about are these little dash mounted or uh, up in your grill mounted little flashing lights that volunteer uh, emergency service people can put on their cars so when they're driving to the fire or to the fire station, they don't have a siren, but at least they have something to warn people, hey, I'm on my way to an emergency, please pull over and let me get by. So anyway, he continues to write, I think it would be a great idea if you could show how to build a relatively inexpensive set of flashing lights, if possible. Even better if they can have variable flash patterns. That's where the 555 comes in. We don't make any money and we don't receive any equipment for personal vehicles, so being able to make our own would be a great benefit to our cause. Thanks for taking the time to read this and all the great videos. Okay, CJ, you asked for it and you got it. I have an idea for some flashing lights with 555 timer chips. We can have two sets of lights. One will go blink, 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 and the other will go blink, 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 and then blink, 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 back and forth, and we can control the rate of the blinks with a small potentiometer. So that would be the change in pattern. Can't really do too much different without getting real elaborate because remember, we wanna make this a DIY project. So if people are building it and they aren't that familiar with electronics, I want it to be simple to build. So let's get over here to the workbench and uh, I'll show you my ideas. So I'm gonna try to source out as much of this stuff as I can from Radio Shack. There's no vested interest from Radio Shack here, no sponsorship or anything like that, just that they're readily available. They're in most places people can drive in there and get them. All it really amounts to is some 555 chips. They're about a buck 99 a piece. Uh, a MOSFET or two, they're about 249 each. Some uh, eight pin dip sockets, they're a couple bucks. Um, circuit board, little printed circuit board thing, perf board, those are about oh, three or four dollars and some various resistors and maybe even a diode or two for some circuit protection. So trying to keep this thing as cheap as we can. I don't have the LEDs here yet. Uh, don't think I'm gonna source those from Radio Shack though. That's one little issue. They don't really have lots of them and we need a pretty good amount of them. So I'm gonna see if I can source out maybe a little light bar that's already built and we'll incorporate that. But for now, we'll just get the basic thing breadboarded up and get a prototype working. So this circuit will be made up of two A-stable circuits on two 555 chips. And uh, the first one here, I used a calculator on Rob Paisley's 555 timer page. I'll put the link to that on the project page on Hackaweek. Lots of good information there. There's a calculator to figure out the on and off cycles and the duration of them. And you end up with um, all the values you need for R1, R2, and C1, which determines the output of the A-stable circuit. This one right now is set up for a one second output. Now I'm going to uh, get it all together on the breadboard here. I've got two of them already on the breadboard. I've got two little 0.1 microfarad um, ceramic caps between, between pins one and eight. That serves as a uh, decoupling capacitor. I've got power going to pin eight on this one already and now I'll go ahead and do R1, two and C1 and get everything connected up and we'll put an LED on here and test if it is indeed a one second output. This is all complete now. Got the two uh, resistors in, got the capacitor in place. There's a red LED. Let's give it 12 volts. See what we get. 
That looks like that's about one second on and one second off to me. In fact, according to the calculations, it should be 1.11572999999 seconds on and 1.1088 seconds off. That's getting right down to the nitty gritty numbers. So, well, it's one second on, one second off. Okay, that's the first part. What we're gonna do now is take the output that's turning this on for one second and we're gonna take that and use it to turn this one on for a duration of one second. We'll set this one up so that it has a much faster blink rate. I have the second A stable built. I moved the big old red LED over here. I put a smaller red LED here because I want you to still be able to see the one second pulse coming out of this A stable circuit. This one, after a little experimentation and some calculations, I came up with about 18 hertz. This is flashing about 18 times a second. And to do that, I ended up putting a one microfarad cap here, a 100 ohm resistor on R1 between pins eight and seven. Between pins six and seven, we put a 27,000 ohm resistor. So let's turn it on and see what we got. So that's flashing about 18 times a second. Of course, the frame rate of the video probably won't show it the way that your human eye would see it. Now, that's pretty cool for one bank of lights. It would just be a big array of red LEDs and they would flash just like that. But if we wanted to go left and right, and as in mounting two banks of them, one on the right side, one on the left side of the vehicle, we would want them to alternate. So how do we do that? Actually, that's pretty simple. A really neat thing about the 555 is this. Pin three that turns on this light, right now it's outputting 12 volts. Now it's not. Now it is, now it's not. So whenever it isn't, it actually goes low. It goes to ground. So we could build this entire circuit all over again, another circuit just like this, and we would connect the power supply to the positive rail only but we would connect the ground lead to pin three on this one. So what that would do is every time you see that light go out, the other circuit would come on for one second. So you would have them alternating back and forth. So that's what we'll do next. We're gonna build this all over again. We're gonna build it down here on the board and we're gonna trigger it from the ground off from pin three when this goes out because it goes high to 12 then it goes low to ground so we'll use that feature of the 555 to alternate back and forth between the two but wait I just realized I don't need to duplicate the entire circuit I just need to build one more a stable here and connect it to this first one I've built another a stable circuit right here and it's connected to a second LED and it gets its ground from pin three of this first A stable. When it goes low, it goes to ground on the output. So all the ground for this A stable comes from pin three when it's off. Let's turn it on and see what we've got. There we go, alternating flashy lights. Next up, I'm going to put uh, a couple of um, little trim pots in see if I can get those in line and maybe we can vary the uh, pulse width of this and we can also vary the duration time let's give that a little experimentation I've installed a 100k trim pot right here it's got three leads on it so you could use it like a voltage divider but I'm using it as just a variable resistor one of the leads down here where there's two on one end and then the single lead up here which is the wiper the part that uh, you can vary with a screwdriver. Right now it's probably running about um, 21 hertz, the same as this one here. Let's increase the resistance and you'll see it'll speed up faster. Of course, this will only show up till I hit the frame rate on my video camera, which I think is 33 frames a second. And once I get past that frequency, my video camera is going to make it appear as though it's staying on steady or doing some weird stuff, but trust me, it's blinking really, really fast. So I can also slow it down a lot. That you'll be able to see, okay? So that allows the user to change the rate that the light flashes at. 
we'll put it about the same as the other one there. That's about 21 hertz. Let's see what we can do with the uh, first A stable now, which would change the duration that these stay on. Now I've installed a 10K pot right here, and incidentally, these trim pots are taking the place of R2, the resistor that was between pins um, 6 and 7 on the A stable circuit on the 555. Right now, this is turned up to 10K, which is 6. Uh, K less than the resistor I had in there, which was making this blink on one second, off one second. Let's turn it on and see what kind of a rate we have now. Actually, that comes out to about uh, 0.7 seconds. 7 tenths of a second on, 7 tenths of a second off. Now, as I turn the trim pot and come down in resistance, this rate will go faster. And of course, the rate between the two is going to be faster also. So that's kind of about the speed you would see on an emergency vehicle, something like that. So again, that would be one more cool thing to add to the circuit so that you have the ability to change the, uh, the rate at which they go back and forth, which would get a driver's attention a lot more than something going like this. You could just set it wherever you want. And with this one, you can change the blink rate of each one. So we've done all that. Now what? Well, now we need to figure out how to light up an array of LEDs. And today it dawned on me that I could probably find an already built uh, small taillight assembly. I've seen some of these at auto parts stores that have LEDs in them, and we can just drive that. Problem is we can't drive that right off from the 555. It just won't handle that kind of current. So what we'll do is what I did with my fuel injector tester. We will employ a MOSFET. That's right, a MOSFET transistor, an N-channel MOSFET, which means uh, N-channel as in just like a PNP or an NPN transistor. NPN works on the negative side of a circuit. So does the N-channel. It switches the uh, ground on and off and it can do it very fast and this can handle about five amps so that's easily going to take care of our uh, our needs with uh, an array of LEDs so now I'll show you a little bit about MOSFETs and how to use those as I have been building this I've been drawing up a schematic and this is it as I go here we got the three five five fives and I've done this on graph paper this is a little thing I picked up from Forrest Mims some of you probably remember his engineer notebooks that were available at Radio Shack. Well, that was a, uh, a great way to get started in electronics and a really neat way to drop a schematic. You have the grid already laid out and you can just follow those lines. So this is the schematic here. This is the uh, LED that I'm driving right now. But a 555 will only handle about a 20 milliamp load. That's not very much. So we need to come up with a way to take that signal that's coming out of the 555 that drives the LED or our light that will mount on the dash or the grill of the vehicle or wherever you want to put it and we have to have something there that will handle a load well that's where the MOSFET comes in and MOSFETs uh, unlike transistors that have a, an emitter base and collector a MOSFET has a source drain and a gate so let me, uh, let me drop a little thing here so you can understand what's going on with a MOSFET and how to connect it up. This is the schematic symbol for a MOSFET. This one's N-channel, that one's P-channel. N-channel works on the negative side of the uh, power supply and P-channel would work on the positive side. Each one of these has the same pinouts, a gate, a drain, and a source. On the N-channel, the source would be connected to ground. On the P channel, the source would be connected to V plus, the voltage side. The D side, that's the drain, that goes to the load, whatever it is you want to drive. The gate is like opening a gate. That's what triggers the MOSFET to turn on. When a voltage is at the gate above its threshold to turn on, there you go. It turns on and it will allow current to flow through the drain and the source. You can think of it like a water valve, like the source is the bucket of water, the drain is at the bottom, you open the gate and it allows the current to flow, the water to flow. So in this case we'll be using an N-channel MOSFET. 
Uh, this little symbol inside here is like a Zener diode that's built into the MOSFET to help protect it from back voltages if you're driving something that has a coil in it, like a fuel injector or a relay. When that coil uh, is de-energized, there is a collapse in that magnetic field and it produces a voltage spike. Well, that could come back through the MOSFET and, and damage it. And if it's a big enough one, you really should put an external Zener diode to help protect it even more. But they do have them built in to help protect them. Uh, there's a couple other tips here with um, MOSFETs as well that we'll move on to next. Here's the MOSFET laying here in the piece of paper and here it is drawn out just like it is in the real world. The gate, drain, and source. Now that is for this particular MOSFET from Radio Shack and it's labeled on the back where the gate, drain, and source are. Be sure to check the pinouts on the one that you decide to use because they can change a little from manufacturer to manufacturer just like transistors. They may not be in this order so be sure to check that. So here we have the source because this is an N-channel MOSFET the source is going to ground and the drain is connected to the load which in this case would be the LED light array and the gate is connected to the voltage that comes out of pin 3 on the 555. It's a good idea to put a 10 ohm resistor on that where it comes from the trigger. This eliminates something called gate ringing. And the 100k resistor that goes to ground, the reason that's there is to ensure that when there's no voltage here, this goes to ground and turns off the MOSFET it makes sure that it really does go fully off quickly when this voltage goes away. So there's a real basic, basic tutorial on how to connect an N-channel MOSFET. Okay, the MOSFET is now part of the schematic. I put it right here and it's got the gate, drain, and source right here and the gate is connected to the output of pin 3 on this A-stable circuit. Comes in through a 10 ohm resistor and then we have a 100k ohm resistor to ground to make sure that the MOSFET's turned off when it has no voltage. The drain is connected here to our LED light. The other side of that LED light goes to 12 volts positive and the source is connected to ground. Now we just need to put it on the uh, breadboard. The two MOSFETs are now on the breadboard and they're working just fine. You can see that they're doing the alternate back and forth thing. We have it all prototyped out. It's working great. We've got a schematic drawn up and we are on our way to completing this. Next week we'll wrap this one up. We'll put everything on a perf board. We'll put everything inside a little box and I may change the uh, little trim pot to actually a knob on the outside of the box. Put a small uh, potentiometer on there instead so you have easy access. And on the small box, we'll probably put um, three LEDs just like this, one to monitor the signal that's making these two go, and then two more to show that the circuit is actually working. So if you have it mounted in the car somewhere, you can look at the little box, you can change the rate of the blink and see the results, and also know that the lights are actually working when you're on your way to that emergency service call. So that's about it for this week, and until next time... The 555, I gotta turn this way. So yes, it's another 555 project. Haven't one done back.